Hi everybody, welcome to another YDF live show. My name is Stephen Aitchison, creator of YourDigitalFormula.com, a program to help you become the influencer that you are already. Okay, I'm going to log into Facebook, see who we have in just now. We're going a bit slow just now, so you need to bear with me. I don't know if it's Facebook, I don't know if it's, if it's my computer or what it is, but we're very slow. Um, who have we got? And Angela Valeri is in the house. Laisla Bernita, welcome to you. We've got Margie Tucker, um, Nordi Adula Kias, um, Push Pabat is in, Kuki Jurana, um, Luna Cassez, Jin Bean is in the house. Welcome to you. Um, Goodalp Duran, I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. Maria Flynn, good morning to you. And Anna Pia Tech Solomon is in, and Bonnie Thomas is in the house just now as well, and Nenith has just joined us as well. So good morning to everybody, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Okay, today is about Facebook news, and I'm going to see if I can set this up for you. So there's a few changes coming to Facebook. Um, the first big change that's coming is Facebook is cracking down on the algorithms for clickbaiting. And clickbaiting, if you don't know what that is, you'll see kind of a lot of it in your newsfeed. And what clickbaiting is, is say for example, you get a headline that says, um, find out what this woman discovered under the covers, for example. That is an example of clickbaiting. I'm just going to see what they see as a, an example of clickbaiting. Let me just bear with me a wee second. Yeah, I don't know if that's a good example of clickbaiting. Right, so this is how kind of Facebook explain it. They say headlines that withhold information intentionally leave out crucial details or mislead people, forcing them to click to find out the answer. For example, when she looked under her couch cushions and saw this, so that is a clickbait headline. So Facebook are cracking down on that just now. Um, they're changing the algorithm to look for clickbait material like this. How does this affect you? Well, <clears throat> Facebook's kind of back-end machines, if you will, that look for these types of articles. It's going to affect you in that if you write articles and you're sending um, kind of from Facebook to your blog, you have to be wary of what type of kind of headlines that you're using for your articles um, because it might get confused. And I don't know if I've seen a change. I've seen a big change recently from my own blog posts on Facebook and the, the reach is much lower than it usually is. So I'm having to look at that just to see if it is to do with the clickbait algorithm. So we have to be careful with that when we're sending traffic from Facebook to our blog post. So I don't know if any, anybody's had experience of that. Um, Margie Tucker is saying, I'm glad they're cracking down on that. It's annoying. It is. It's one of the biggest complaints that people have on Facebook about these clickbait materials. But if you get caught up in the crossfire and you've got a blog, for example, Margie, it's going to, it might be detrimental to your blog um, as well. So hopefully um, it's not going to be too harsh, but I expect some changes with regards to people posting from Facebook to genuine kind of blog articles. So you have to be wary of that as well. Um, so if you're seeing that on your blog post and you're not getting as much reach, then that's why it might be. So it might take a couple of weeks until they get kind of get used to this kind of clickbait and kind of the sensitivity of it as well. Um, Laurie Emmett says about time. Yeah, it is about time because they are a pain in the arse, but we can recognise clickbait whenever we see it as well. We can tend to, well, I tend to ignore it. And um, when I see kind of stuff like that, and it's the same with websites as well. I don't like on websites. Mm -hmm. You know, when you go into a website and at the bottom they've got the ads by, um, I don't know, certain companies um, that do the ad networks, and it's got kind of real, real clickbait kind of headlines. That's how they make their money because of these clickbait. But no longer are they going to be able to do that on Facebook. And I would imagine a lot of people are going to lose a lot of money um, because of that. But we don't do that anyway, so that's cool. Um, well, hopefully we don't do that. Okay, some changes coming to Facebook on the app, on the Facebook app. They're going to be changing up the Facebook app. Mashable noticed this kind of this week as well, whereby you can see a lot more information on your app. And I'm just going to show you kind of what I'm talking about. Just hopefully we can see this. We're going to be able to see this okay. And hopefully you can still hear me okay. So, 
This is what they're going to be changing it to. I hope you can see that. Okay, so usually at the top, you've got kind of Messenger Day and you've got a couple of other things you can check out as well. You've got your homepage button, you've got your shop button as well. But now they're going to be adding this multifunction key to the bottom in your app. If you use your app a lot, this is going to apply to you. And they're going to be changing it to something like this. So you'll be able to see everything that's going on. So you can see all the tools that are coming on with Facebook. So you can go to groups, your feeds, your friends, local, nearby friends, moves, weather, buy and sell groups and stuff like that as well. So that is a big change that's coming to the app. They're testing that out just now. It's not available to everybody. Um, and I would imagine it'll be on the iOS app, first of all, before they put it on Android. Um, so that is coming soon. Just be careful, not be careful, but just be wary of that as well. And what else is happening? I'll just get rid of this. Yeah, what they're going to be doing as well. In fact, let me know if anybody's seen that on their app. Um, if you've seen that on your app just now, let me know if you have seen that already. Um, Cheryl Fletcher Greening saying, I hear you fine. Good, good. You can hear me fine once I've got the, the screen shown. Uh, Laurie Emmett, they have already announced that. Stephen Webb, I agree with you. Um, so what was Stephen saying? Hope they crack down on lives that are not lives. Yes, that's another change um, that's coming as well. So what Facebook are cracking down on um, is lives that are not real lives. They're just static images. So they're cracking down on that big time as well. So that's been announced. I think that was within uh, last a couple of weeks ago that was announced. So they're going to be cracking down on lives that are not real lives. Um, and I noticed just the other day I was out. Um, where was I? I was out in the car. Sean was getting some shopping from Next or she was buying some clothes from Next and I was just kind of on the phone and I noticed this live show there was getting about 3,000 kind of people at one time so just now we've got 177 people on at one time and I thought how the hell are they getting 3,000 so I checked, clicked on it to see what it was and it was just a, it was a religious site and it was kind of our Hail Mary or something I can't remember what it was it was about the kind of Mother Mary or something like that um, but it was just replaying over and over and over again, two static images, a guy's voice and a woman's voice. I can't remember the name of the um, the Facebook page. But I thought, it's not a good thing to do that. But then I thought, it's quite ingenious at the same time that they, they've got this rolling all the time. I don't know how long they had it on for. And I thought, could I use that? And I thought, no, that's just, it's not a good way to do a live, to be honest. So totally agree with you, Stephen, but they're going to be cracking down on that as well. Um so that was the first time I'd seen that. That was only three, four weeks ago or something. So I had to check it out. So they're going to be cracking down on that as well. Um, just see if there's any comments just now on them. Yeah, they've already done that. Excellent. Okay, so what other changes have we got um, coming up? They've got a simplified canvas creation, which is kind of more or less for ads, canvas ads. Some, uh, something I don't really kind of report on the ads kind of side of it just now but that is interesting as well the other thing is cross app kind of notifications so you're going to get cross app notifications whereby I'll just switch back again and show you this and this was from Mary Smith that reported this and Mary Smith is a Facebook queen you all kind of know Mary Smith and she'll probably get things um, quicker because she's kind of in direct contact with Facebook and if changes come out, she might get them kind of quicker as well. So cross-app notification is you're going to get it from, or kind of messages from Messenger, Facebook, and Instagram at the same time. So you'll be able to see exactly, and just in one kind of app, that you're going to see all your messages uh, with a little pop-up like this as well, which is good. If you're into Instagram and you're into, kind of, I use Messenger all the time, and um, get more and more into Messenger and the capabilities of Messenger as well. I think it's going to be brilliant for the future. Um, and Instagram as well, I don't use so much, but I've got a presence there. I've got about 80,000 followers on Instagram, and I need to use it more. It's just getting the time to do it. So I'll just switch back. Um, so yeah, that's another change that's coming, which is a good thing as well. And search personal profiles. Have you ever, and I've, I've been looking for this for ages, if you've gone onto your own personal profile and you thought, what was that kind of event I was at like a couple of years ago and you want to try and find out information without scrolling all the way through um, your kind of newsfeed, 
Then they're going to be um, producing a search app um, as well. I'll just get this up for you as well and just show you this on resec. And this is going to be really good actually. I'm really not excited about it. Um, but this is something, so they're going to have a little search, this profile box, not only for your page, this is going to be on everybody. So I can search on your page, Stephen, or Laurie, or Maria, I can, I'll can. i be able to search on your profile as well. So say we went, we went to an event together, and you came up to Edinburgh or something, and two years later we're searching for the photos for that event, you can now do that on the Facebook kind of personal profile that you've got just here. Again, this is from Mary Smith. It's not available to everybody just yet. Um, I'd be curious to know if you've got it already. So if you have that search function on your page, um, just let me know. Because um, I think that's going to be quite cool, actually. Um, I'll just see if anybody's got it. So if you've got that on your Facebook profile page just now, let me know. Um, just to see if anybody's got that. Maria Flynn, me go to Edinburgh. I don't see that happening, LOL. Maria, you're not coming in a couple of weeks' time. <laughs> We're all going to be meeting in Edinburgh. We're meant to have the YDS Scotland event, which was unfortunately cancelled, but from that kind of happening, more good has happened. And the people that are originally going to go to the YDS Scotland event are still meeting up in Edinburgh. So I think we've got about 22 people now coming to Edinburgh. We're either going for a meal um, and the pub or just going straight to the pub um, to meet up and we'll, we'll talk um, with everybody there as well. So I think there's about 20 people going just now. So that'll be quite cool. Um, so we're going to Edinburgh City Centre. Um, so yeah, I'm looking, really looking forward to that. It's going to be brilliant. Um, that's just for one night, but we might stay um, until we might get a hotel or something for a couple of nights in Edinburgh. Um, Jen Atkinson, hi Steve, I think the search function has already been added to all pages but to see it you have to first click on the post tab on the left of the page. Right, you're talking about something different. Um, I'll just show you what you're talking about Jen. I think you're talking about something different. Just correct me if I'm wrong. Right, so what you're talking about here is I'm going to show you one wee sec. We'll go to another another page. So you're talking about the search function on a page. So if you go to posts, click on post for your digital formula, and you can go to the search function there. But we're talking about on the personal profile. So you can see here on the personal profile, there's no way to search or kind of all your posts that you've kind of put up. You could click on photos um, and kind of other things that you've got as well, but there's no way to actually search for something on your personal profile. And that's going to be the new feature, Jen. So it's different from pages. This is for your personal profile. Um, so they're going to be doing that soon, hopefully. Um, and that's something I've wanted for a long time, to be honest. And I think that's going to be really, really good. Um, Jen is saying, oh, gotcha. Excellent. Yeah, it was just because <clears throat> before, a lot of people didn't know about that as well. So that was good that you can highlight that for the business pages that you can now say, well, you've been able to do it for a while now. You can search, but you have to click on post first and then go to the search function. Um, so if you have any questions about the changes, about Facebook, about growing your online business, about anything else, this is the um, point to ask. Um, so this was just kind of news this week from Facebook. I was going to do kind of news from other social media sites, but I'm just going to stick with Facebook because I use Facebook all the time. I don't really use a lot of the other platforms. Um, I post to all the platforms, but I don't actively engage in it. I just don't have the bloody time, and I would imagine you don't have the time either. But I would focus on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. That was the three main big ones I would focus on, and that's where I'm putting most of my effort. With the bulk of my effort being on Facebook, then it's YouTube, and then it's be split between them, Instagram, um, as well, just keeping a presence up there. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah, if you've got any questions, let me know. I think Maria's got a few comments kind of posted just now. Um, 
Maria Flynn, inauthentic and disingenuous posts are really starting to be noticed, making Braveheart stand out so much more. The pool marketing you teach in YDF keeps us in growth mode for the long term. And that's exactly it. Um, what you Because people are starting to get really savvy on Facebook just now. They really are getting savvy and they can spot one of the kind of disingenuous kind of posts, as Maria says there, and the inauthentic posts kind of immediately. They know if it's a sales one, they know if it's a clickbait one, they know they can much more savvy and that's why you as a YDF tribe member or one of the brave parts or if you've been watching the show you know not to do that you know how to be kind of authentic be genuine be yourself and you're going to get a lot more people to your kind of videos to your pages to your kind of products to your services or whatever as well and that's one of the big things we're teaching in the kind of YDF program as well is that need to be that should be one of your values and principles if you're a business owner to be genuine to be honest to be authentic and to be a little bit vulnerable um, as well because uh, that's what people are attracted to and I don't mean crying on cue I don't I, I mean genuinely kind of vulnerable if you've got a story or something just kind of open yourself up a wee bit and it's going to help you so much more Um, so thanks for that Maria Stephen Webb, um, also I've seen the option upload video to page header, but disappeared five minutes later. Yeah, that was reported a couple of weeks ago as well. Stephen, somebody else reported it in the YDF tribe group um, that you could put a video up, but I didn't actually see it. I couldn't uh, find out any more information on it, which would have been quite cool. I think um, some good experiments could have been made from that um, just to see how things um, kind of panned out. But yeah, I've never seen it since either, Stephen. Um, Elaine Harding, can I post my page on other people's pages? Um, you can to a degree. Um, what I've got, I'll just show you this. Um, Elaine, we'll go over to a page. Okay, so say I was going to post on, I don't know what post today, for example, what page? That's a Today Show. Right, what they have here, you can see just now, they've changed this over the last couple of weeks as well. It used to be if you went to a page, you could see visitor posts on the right-hand side. You can't see them on the front page, but you can still see them when you click on posts. And you can see visitor posts. So you could then paste in a link and that would go to visitor posts. So for example, if I was to paste this, it's live now. So we'll click on that. Live now talking about the latest Facebook updates. Post that. And if we refresh that, that should now be in the visitor posts. So you see there we click on visitor posts and there we go. And that's how you get on somebody else's page. However, there's a caveat to that. We'll just go back. When you do this, if you've not got a big page, you're probably not going to get a lot of reach from the visitor posts. And you've got um, a chance of being banned from that page as well. Um, so if you're doing it a lot, then you're probably going to get banned from the page. If you get banned from a lot of pages, Facebook might close down your account as well. So you don't want to do that too often if you're thinking about that um, kind of Elaine. So I wouldn't actually suggest doing that. Um, but great question as well. You can post on somebody else's page as long as they've got that visitor post section. So go to the page, click on post. If they've got a visitor post section and you can see three posts that have already been posted, then you can post on that page. But you've got the, the chance of being banned from that page and possibly um, from Facebook as well, so you have to be really, really careful of that. Um, okay, we'll just see if there's any more questions. Um, Elaine Harding is saying, brilliant, thank you. Thank you for the question, Elaine, really appreciate it. Vicky McWilliams, I'm new to all of this. What and how is the best platform to begin a blog? Um, we've spoke about this quite a lot, actually. Um, you have to, for a WordPress blog, for a blog, uh, you definitely want WordPress. 
Um, but you don't want a WordPress hosted account, you want a WordPress self-hosted account. So that means you need to get a domain name, hosting for it, and then um, a one-click install of WordPress. So you don't have to kind of upload all the files yourself. So my there's loads of kind of hosting companies out there. Bluehost um, might be a good one for you if you're in the US. I use Heart Internet. Um, they're really good. I've been using them for I don't know how many years, years and years since I first started the blog. Um, and that's over 10 years ago. God, it's coming up for 11 years I started the blog. Um, so yeah, that's the best way to start a blog. And just type in Google, how to start a blog. Um, but you're better starting off with a self-hosted one rather than going to a hosted platform like WordPress.com, which is different from a self-hosted one. Um, so I hope that helps, Vicky. Maria Flynn, have you noticed a multitude of new Facebook accounts starting in 2017? I'm not allowing them into my groups. Thoughts? Yes, there's a hell of a lot of this going on, and I suspect it's fake accounts that's happening, and there's loads and loads and loads. Um, so if you see what Maria's talking about, I'll just see if we can get an example here. Have we got time? Yeah, we've got time. See if we can get an example here. Um, we'll go to... Um, what we'll go to. I don't know if we'll have anybody trying to get in there. One person wants to join the group. Four other groups. No, that's fine. So, <clears throat> but if you're a kind of an admin of a group, you get a lot of kind of member requests. And what's happening? What Maria's talking about here? What's happening is you get a lot of people who have literally it tells you the date they joined Facebook and they've just kind of joined Facebook in the last month or two months or three months and you can see they're members of 50 groups already and yet they've only just joined so I always decline those people and um, so obviously this person joined the 25th of January 2012 they're a member of only four other groups and it tells you the member of the other groups that they're part of as well or a couple of them at least and you can click on four other groups and I'll tell you the member um, who they're a member of Ayurveda Helpline, Sports Science. So I would kind of approve that person because I'm the admin of Fringe Dwellers Group, which is a personal development um, group. So yeah, I've noticed that, I definitely noticed that, Maria, and it's a pain in the ass, but I decline them straight away and block them as well for the future. I don't just decline them, I always block them so they never can request to get into the group again. And that's a big thing, it's a pain in the ass for groups. Groups are going to become so much bigger um, for Facebook over the coming months as well. It's going to be even more important to get your own group um, started. And, funny enough, in the monthly members, uh, YDF Monthly, we will be talking about how to kind of start a group and how to grow a group. And that will be the, on the first Monday of June, whenever that is. When is the first Monday of June? I don't know. It's on a date. <laughs> I don't know what date because I've not got my calendar oh have I? no I've not got my calendar up I need to kind of put in so it's the first Monday of June YDF Monthly so if you've not joined yet um, join us on YDF Monthly there's a link above this in the comment section or above the video you can join us there to get more information on that and with you joining YDF Monthly as well what you do you get the last three um, training modules that we've done myself and Maria Flynn so we get together for about 40 minutes to speak about there's going to be groups um, on Monday, the kind of whatever it is in June, and then we'll have a 40-minute Q&A after that. It's always good. It's a good laugh and always good cracking it, and it's always high energy as well. It's really good. I really enjoy the YDF monthly. Um, so, yeah, that's happening as well, and thanks for that question, um, Maria. Stephen Webb, I know this is naughty, but is it worth getting somebody else to post on some of the big pages when you go live and um, you can try it the thing thing I've noticed is I've kind of done this obviously I've done this as well but I have posted from one of my smaller pages and I posted from a main page and I found I get a lot more traffic from the main page than I do with the smaller page so if you've got a small page you're not going to get that much traction and um, as well I don't know how the algorithm works to be honest in a visitor visitor post section I just know the bigger the page you've got the more reach you get on that person's page um, so you could do it you can try it um, Stephen so uh, I definitely would um, kind of try it just to see how it goes 
and see what happens. Um, obviously, I kind of uh, have done that as well. So, but the smaller your page, it doesn't tend to work, which is a pain in the ass. Um, Kathy Baker, hi Stephen, have you heard anything about reviews, ratings on Facebook pages disappearing? Maybe a Facebook glitch? No, there's nothing, I've not heard of any, anything like that. I think it's always a good thing to have the reviews and ratings, but it might be a Facebook glitch. I'm just going to check on my page um, just now, just to see if there's anything. No, the reviews are still there, so it might be a Facebook glitch, Cathy. Um, I've never heard any news saying that it's going to be taken off. I think that's a good thing to have, so I hope they don't take off, to be honest. A comment, Stephen Webb, I now have entrance questions for my group. It has initially made a dif big difference. Yeah, that is a good thing as well. So what Stephen's talking about, you can set if you're a group admin. Again, we'll just go over. We've got a wee bit of time. Uh, if you're a group admin, admin you can set um, kind of questions as well for people to answer. So you can go into settings and add a question. So ask pending members questions. Um, so it depends on the type of group they're in as well. You could just ask, why do you want to join a group? Um, it might give you some banal kind of answer, but it's another way to kind of guard your group and make sure it's genuine members that are trying to get in. So that's what Stephen's talking about there. And they just added that about three, four weeks ago as well, which is a good thing. Oh, they added it kind of all over three, four weeks ago. They tested it out a number of months ago, but they added it everywhere um, three, four weeks ago. So yeah, that's what Stephen's talking about. And I think that's a good thing as well, Stephen. So definitely agree with you there. Um, Connie Sue Dangit, question. How do you stop people from adding you to groups? Um, you'd have to go into your settings area. I don't know exactly where. Uh, so there's a settings area on your profile to stop people um, kind of maybe adding you to groups. I don't know exactly where off the top of my head, to be honest. Um, but it will be in your kind of security and settings somewhere. I don't know the answer to that just now exactly where, but I'll find out for you. I know there used to be an option to do that. So hopefully that's still, I would imagine that will still be there. I've never had to use it um, for a long time. And I think that is us. Um, just to see if there's any more quick questions. Sheriff Fletcher Greening, I'm so thankful for all the amazing Bravehearts I've met, just an amazing group of people, Maria Flynn, Kim Mann, um, Kim, um, Catherine Cox, Stephen Webb, Howard Mann, just to name a few, so so many awesome individuals, you're simply amazing, um, so great to share joy, positivity, hope and joy with you all, brilliant message, I love that, Cheryl, thank you um, so much for that, and she's talking about the Bravehearts that are in the group, and I, I noticed Kyan Howland has came in, and we've got Joan Francis Boyle in as well, so we've got a lot of the brave hearts here, and Kimberly I. D. Man is in as well. So um, yeah, the brave heart group is a brilliant, um, an amazing group of people, very very helpful and very supportive of each other, and I think that's one of the big benefits of um, joining the YDF program is getting into that group, because um, you never want to leave after you <laughs> after that, um, which is brilliant, and I love the group. Um, Maria Flynn, yeah, that was it. YDF monthly is on June the fifth. That's the next one. We're going to be talking about groups, how to start a group, how to grow a group, and how to manage a group as well. Um, so that's myself and Maria Flynn on the YDF Monthly. Links above the comments or above this video. Um, if you want to join us, you can join us and get the last three months of training um, for free as well. Plus you'll get other goodies in there as well. Um, and you'll get the option to join the main YDF program as well. Um, Cheryl Fletcher Green. Steve, I love you too. Your note was above. <laughs> Thank you, Cheryl. I really appreciate that. Um, okay, I think that's it. That's it for today. That's Facebook's news. That's your Q&A finished as well. Um, Stephen Webb, like Hotel California, never want to leave. Yes, once you get in the group, you never want to leave. Um, it's just got that hypnotic vibe in it. It's just because of all the great people in it. Um, so it's brilliant. I love the YDF group. Maria Flynn, groups is going to be big moving forward on Facebook. Just my two cents. Yes, it is. Um, even more important, I think, 
because the Facebook reach on the pages is going down and down and down and down. So I think we have to look at other ways. And just before I go, I just want to say this. When we recognize or we see that the Facebook algorithms have changed and the kind of our reach has gone really kind of low um, just now, we have to understand, first of all, that this is not our page. We might say, I've got a, a, a kind of Facebook page, but it's not, we don't own it, we don't pay anything for it, it's totally free. Um, so it's Facebook page. They can do kind of almost what they want. Well, they can do what they want. They don't have to really answer to anybody. It's their platform. So what we have to do when they do things like this, we have to kind of work our way kind of around the algorithms, find out the best way to kind of get, get more reach or find out other ways to get kind of more website clicks or more people kind of joining our tribe. And groups is definitely one of the, the, one of the things that we can do to counteract the low reach on our business pages um, just now. And that's why we're going to be focusing on groups as well in the YDF, the next YDF monthly. Obviously, if you're a YDF tribe member, you're one of the brave hearts, you get access to that for free. And we'll post a, no, a notice in the group and we're going to go live. So we're going to be talking about that. So that's going to be good. And that's it for just now. I think I've been on for 35 minutes. So whatever you're doing, have a brilliant day. And until tomorrow, namaste. Take care. Bye now.